and if truly the Jehovah has lifted you higher in the month of November, I want you to clap my faith, shout my faith. Let the devil know that you believe the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody excited to, to see the month of November? I said, are you excited to see the month of November? You know, we're already in the 11th month. And uh, there are some miracles that we call 11th hour miracles. Those are the ones that you pro probably thought may not show up again. But all of a sudden, God overturns and overturns and overturns and causes a shift. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you, believe, if you believe God is overturning something for you this new month, I want you to give the Lord a shout this month. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Lift your two hands with me all over this place. Our Father, we thank you for the benefit of seeing the 11th month of 2018. Not unto us, not unto us, but unto you be glory, honor, and adoration because you have done all things well. And as a church, as individuals this morning, we're showing our gratitude. We thank you for your goodness. Only you can do the things that you do in our lives. Only you can preserve. Only you can save. Only you heals. Only you provides the way you do. And we're saying that we're grateful today. We thank you for grace. We thank you for strength. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for triumph. We are not where we want to be, but we are not where we used to be. And we know you are the one who brought us to where we are. And we know because we are grateful, you are moving us higher. And so we celebrate you this morning. And we thank you. And we bless your holy name. Somebody who is grateful one more time this morning. Put your hands together. Celebrate. They give up all good gifts. They give up life. Come on, somebody. Let's wait a little more this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. Before I go into the word of God this morning, can I just pray with everyone celebrating birthdays in the month of November? All the November babies, can you stand? Can you please stand? You're born in the month of November. Can you please stand? Praise God. Praise God. Also, I'd love for you to stand if it's your wedding anniversary or the anniversary of your business or something, you know, important. Can you also stand? Can you also stand? That means you have an anniversary in the month of November. Can you also stand? Let's pray. Let's pray for our brothers and sisters standing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. On behalf of our brothers and sisters standing, everyone watching online, born in the month of November, or have a special anniversary in the month of November, we declare this morning as a church over them that as they celebrate this new month, celebration and rejoicing will not depart from their home. Yeah. We pray, O oh God, that you will increase their greatness and comfort them on every side. In the name of Jesus, we pray the blessing of divine protection over them. You will not be cut short in the midst of your days. With long life, my God will satisfy you and show you his salvation. In the name of Jesus, every good thing that you are celebrating will not be turned to sorrow. In the name of Jesus, and in the places where you are looking up to God, we're coming to an agreement of faith with you today, that Jehovah will do you well. That Jehovah will show up for you. In the name of Jesus, that before the month of November comes to an end, you have a new testimony. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. And we'll bless you in Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout a believing amen. amen. Praise God. Let us appreciate Jesus for all the people thanking God this morning. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. I hope you took a good look at the people who stood. Mark them. Mark them for rice and stew. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Mark them for celebration. Yeah. Uh, um, well, you, you guys know that I'm always ready, you know. You, you know that if you invite me, I'll show up, all right? 
one of the benefits of being a pastor is the grace to enjoy one party to another, you know, and all that. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I said praise God. For as many as are marking milestone birthdays, as you rejoice this month, God will double your joy. Yeah. Sorrow will be far from you. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want you to help me look at your neighbor and ask them, how was your week? This new week and this new month will be filled with joy for you. Yeah. Everywhere you show up, this new month, God will show up on your behalf. Wherever your name is mentioned, this new month, favor will follow it. I said favor will follow it. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. All right, maybe one more thing before I get into the word. Um, something special is happening this month, and that's happening to our men. Yeah. We have a men's conference this month. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Towards the end of the service, we'll have um, the ushers give out when we're taking the offering this very special invitation card. I want men to pick it up. Ladies who love their men, if you love us, you can also pick this up and use it to invite a man in your life. It's a one-day conference, Saturday the 24th of November. Uh, let's take this short video just, just to see what is about to go down. Yeah. What makes a man smile? Is it the outward appearance? The tall, dark, handsome, and buff stereotype? Or the designer clothes? Is it the accessories? Or the charisma and his ability to command some presence? Is he still a man's man if behind all the charisma and nice clothing his eyes are visionless? What if his heart is broken? Or he's confused? Beneath all the bravado, men have their struggles. They struggle with career, emotions, spirituality, sexuality, among other things. It takes a real man, however, to acknowledge his struggles and take practical steps in finding lasting solutions. The Elevation Church invites you to attend the Men's Conference, tagged Becoming a Man of Strength, on Saturday, 24th November, 2018, at 9 a.m. Come! Learn what it takes to truly become a man's man, not only in outward appearance. This conference is for men of all ages and life stages. Praise God. Like I said, towards the end of the service, we'll, we'll distribute the, 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 the flyers or, or the cards, the invitation cards. There has a bit of more details. I wanted to invite your colleagues at work promises to be a really powerful time. Um, uh, we'll have um, uh, Mr. Shea Wright, the, the principal consultant of Wright & Co, uh, who is a veteran in the business of being a faithful man. He's a businessman, a Christian man, whom I believe will encourage us and guide and speak words of wisdom to us. And also joining us will be my friend, uh, Pastor Yemi Davis from Global Impact Church whom I've known for over 20 years as a, a faithful man, a man who has been standing you know, faithful to the call of God over his life. Uh, and I will also be at the conference. It promises to really be a powerful time. We're going to pray, we're going to worship, we're going to talk, we're going to be down to earth, we're going to challenge each other, and we're going to trust God for grace to come upon us as men to be leaders indeed and to be visionaries indeed and people who will move our families forward, and we will stay faithful to the call of God over our lives. I want you to look at every man, you know, any man sitting around you, and tell them, don't miss the conference. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Challenge them. Tell them again. Say, don't miss the conference. So the theme is becoming a man of strength. Uh, 2018 for us, our team has been stronger, and we believe we should even end the year stronger. That's why I'm encouraging all the men to come together Saturday, uh, 24th of November. The time is 9 to 2 p.m., 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Just, just mark your calendar and strike that time out. Yeah. We may even be out of here before 2 p.m., but I want you to prepare your mind. I'm coming, you know, 
to be here, to be blessed. It's good. We'll have time to network, meet other men, you know, and all that. It's a lot of fun, yeah. And it's men of all ages. So somehow, you will find your type. Yeah, somehow, yeah. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. So it's our Enterprise Development Month, the month of November. Uh, we've been doing this, I think, for the last four or five years. And we've gotten great feedback, great results from uh, focusing on... Um, Enterprise and career developments in the month of November. Uh, this message this morning, I've titled it Divine Establishment. The theme for this year's EDM, Enterprise Development Month, is Enduring Enterprises. Enduring Enterprises. Psalm 90 and verse 17. That's our anchor scripture for this series. And I want you to commit it to memory if you can. I encourage that you should commit this to memory. Psalm 90 and verse 17. Can I have that up, please? Psalm 90 and verse 17. That's the anchor scripture for this series. Can we read it together? One, two, go. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Can we do it one more time? Is that okay? One, two, let's go. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The Lord bless the reading of his word. I love the Amplified Classic Translation of this scripture. Uh, the Amplified Classic Translation. If you have that, can you put it up for me? If you don't, I'm going to read it from here. The Amplified Classic Translation. It says, And let the beauty and delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands confirmed and confirm and establish it. it. Says, let the beauty, the lightfulness, and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the beauty, the delightfulness, the Lord wants to delight in what I do and make it, He wants to make it a delight to Himself. And then he delights in establishing me. So let the beauty, the delight, the favor of the Lord be upon us. And confirm and establish the work of our hand. God wants to establish and confirm the work of my hand. He wants to confirm it. He wants to establish it. So it's important that we understand, first and foremost, individually, that you are an enterprise. Yeah. Three years ago, I was opening the message, November message like this, and the title was, I'm an enterprise. You can get the message. It's there in our archives. I'm an enterprise. I want to start out this morning by reiterating that truth, that you are an enterprise. You have been designed, or, you, you know, you're, you're being, you are a being that is designed to be productive, innovative and resourceful so as, as a human being i've been designed to be innovative to be resourceful to be creative so i'm an enterprise when god made everything including man he said it's very beautiful yeah and he said we're, we're good good to go i am an enterprise when god looks down from heaven he wants to see resourcefulness he wants to see creativity. He wants to see innovation. And God, you know, created all the first and then stepped aside and left the work of creation to us. And anything that can create is an enterprise. Anything that can multiply is an enterprise. Are you, are you still with me this morning? And God blessed man and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the heart, subdue it, and have dominion. That means you're an enterprise. Are you still with me this morning? I said, are you still with me this morning? Yeah. God created apple, but he didn't create apple juice. He left that to man. God created trees, but he didn't make sofas. He didn't make chairs. When you are tired of standing under the tree, you will cut it and make chair for yourself with the wood. That was the whole idea. Somebody still with me this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an enterprise. You're an enterprise. God expects resourcefulness creativity and innovation from all of his creatures that's what he expects he expects that from all of his creatures 
So he started the work of creation, but he didn't complete it. He left the work of creation to all of us to pick up from where he stopped from. That's why God only made, made Adam and Eve, even in biological terms, after Adam and Eve, he left procreation to us. Yeah. So that we can replenish and fill the earth and subdue it. Yeah. Are you still with me this morning? And in many other areas, it's the same. God expects resourcefulness, creativity, and innovation from all of us. So whether you are on a job, God expects resourcefulness, creativity, and innovation from you. If you have an enterprise in your hand, God expects resourcefulness, creativity, and innovation from you managing that enterprise. Is somebody see here this morning? So whether you're on a career path, you're in business, wherever you found yourself, God expects all that from you. We live in a time and an age where people are desperate. You know, in the general sense, we call it also. Yeah, I want to also in Lagos. People have this saying that I didn't come to Lagos to count bridges. And I, I wonder how many bridges we have in Lagos anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because if your business is actually to count bridges, you should go to Dallas, Texas. Or any of those mega cities. <laughs> Praise God. But people say, I, don't, I didn't come to Lagos to count bridges, you know, and all that. I want to also, I want to make it, I want to break through. But what we see today is that there are a lot of young men who are so fixated on breaking through, I want to armor, that they refuse to acknowledge, even Christian men refuse to acknowledge, Christian women refuse to acknowledge that it's God that establishes. Yeah. And there's grace for divine establishment. And that God wants us to be enduring enterprises. And he wants us to build enduring enterprises. Not to just do deals. There are too many people who are visited on deals. Make quick money. And then you buy a car. And there are no deals for six months. And you're begging to foil the car. You're not building anything tangible. Anything that can endure. Anything that can transcend your generation. The grace that you carry is the grace that can establish transgenerational blessings. That's why we call Abraham. When we talk about Abraham, we say God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in Abraham, you have been blessed in Christ. That means the blessing of Abraham that made the grace that he carried and what he established to be transgenerational is still on you. It's okay to work hard. But if your focus is on hustling just to have one deal, make 10 million, uh, make 1 billion naira. You know, some, some people have made 1 billion naira before, but today you cannot put anything to their name apart from the fact that they ride a good car and live in a better part of the city. Yeah. You cannot say that <laughs> this is what they do and what they are known for. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And many of such people are still in church. Who carried the grace of Abraham? Abraham was not like that. And if you are a child of Abraham, Jesus said, the works of Abraham you shall do. Yeah. You should be established like Abraham. <laughs> glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. So, I mean, let me just read the scripture just to buttress what I'm saying. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15. Look at what the psalmist says here. He says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted, somebody say planted. planted. Oh, come on, say it again, say planted. planted. Say those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Not jumping from pillar to post. Yeah. You are here today, you are there tomorrow. You know, some, some, some people will, will change a job because of 20,000 20, naira increment in salary. Yeah. Just because the focus is, is all, about, all about the money. And you're not thinking, look, where is God placing me? How, how, how does he want me to be positioned? What's God's plan for my life? Because I carry grace. I carry the blessing of Abraham. And this blessing is able to establish someone. And God wants to establish the work of your hand. You know, according to this Psalm 92, if you look at it, let, let's unpack it a bit. 
I have a lot to say this morning, and God will help me. Uh, I say I have about 20, 25 minutes, all right? So let, 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 let's unpack it a little bit. The righteous shall flourish like palm tree. <laughs> that is loaded. If I stop there, I can continue for the rest of the time that I have. The righteous, righteous shall flourish like palm tree. When you look at the palm tree, the palm tree, every part of it is resourceful. Everything in the palm tree. Everything from the leaf that we use for all kinds of things, including broom, to the nut, the kernel, the covering of the kernel itself from where we get palm oil, to the nut inside the kernel that some of the ladies here use for their hair this morning. Yeah, coconut oil. <laughs> including myself, actually, I also used it. Yeah, on the altar of God, that should be open. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I'm just trying to let you see how resourceful. The Bible compared you and I to the palm tree. What a metaphor. Yeah. Compared you and I to a palm tree. If you know anything about the palm tree at all, take it from top to bottom. Everything is used for something. Everything is useful. Just think about it. Everything. Everything is useful. And it says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He said it shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Just go and check it out. What they use cedars for and how long they stay on the ground and how resourceful that tree is and the, the, the timber that comes from it. That's what the Bible compares you and I to. And it said those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. You see, the problem between, I mean, with human beings is that we are not like trees. Trees have enough sense to know that you stay where you are planted. Yeah. But human beings, because we have power of mobility, yeah, and we have willpower, we can do anything. Yeah. See people moving like evil spirits all over the place. Yeah. Some people cannot stay on a job for three months. I see something is chasing you. Yeah. I want to, I want to break through. Why don't you just calm down, check the thing out very well, pray. Because there's grace upon you for divine establishment. Yeah. All this touch and go business, touch and go business. Yeah. Before you know it, all the money has finished because you lost 5 million here, lost 10 million there, lost this here. And yet they said, give to God. You won't give. You see what I'm saying? That's just a job. That's not where I'm going this morning. Just to, to help somebody to underscore something. Yeah. Yeah. You argue, you know, all that on Titan, whether Titan is Old Testament, New Testament. It, give to God. All right? Give to God. Yeah. It's generosity. And the Bible talks about being generous towards God and then generous towards man. What's the greatest of all the commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might and then love your neighbor as yourself and one principal way by which we show love is giving john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave anyone that loves god does not argue about giving to god yeah that's the truth yeah. i don't care what what anybody say anyone that loves god yeah it's your prerogative to know that you are in the right place in the first instance. If God has planted you here, remain planted. Don't facilitate. Don't move around. You know, today we see you, tomorrow we don't see you. They that are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the cause of our God. Be concerned about the house of God. Show love to God in the place where you are planted. These are the ways we establish ourselves under the covenant of divine establishment and enduring enterprise. So you, you don't just facilitate. Trees are planted. They stay there. They develop roots downwards and then bear fruit upwards. If you are planted, we should see your fruit. As you, but you need to develop roots downward. When you continue to uproot, 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 it's difficult to grow root downward. 
touch and go cannot lead to growing roots downward. Is somebody still with me this morning? That's about the kingdom of God. What about the business itself? You see, life is in phases. There's the morning part of life. There's the afternoon. There's the evening, and then there's night. Most of the people get into the labor market between age 20 and 25. Or maybe sometimes for people who are very fast at it, maybe from 19. Get into the labor market. Yeah. What you do with your first 10 to 15 years in the labor market will determine how you will spend the afternoon of your life. In fact, that's the afternoon of your life. Then from that point on, you go to the evening. What you do with the first 10 to 15 years of your entry into the labor market determines how you will spend and how you will position for the next 20 years. And that takes you to retirement. Yeah. Your afternoon determines your evening to a large extent. What you are able to achieve with your afternoon will determine how you spend the evening of your life. And by evening, I'm talking about from 45 to 65. Yeah. After 65, going to 70, you are in the evening. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, evening has come. You have to slow down. Yeah. You have to slow down and take it easy. Yeah. Evening has come. There are things to do in the evening and there are things to enjoy in the evening. So it's not like evening is a bad place to be. It's just that you need to have arranged yourself to enjoy evening. You know now, when you work hard, you get home, evening time. There's food to eat, there's family to be with, you know, there's fun. Evening can be fun. Yeah? Can you hear me look at your neighbor, tell them, look forward to your evening. But do something now. Yeah. You know, we say life is about play now and pay later. Or pay now and play later. If you play in morning and afternoon, you will have to work in the evening. Yeah? Anytime I see a man over 70 that is working to eat, it breaks my heart. I'm telling you. I, in, I don't even know how, inadvertently, I bring out money to want to give them because I don't want to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It breaks my heart whenever I see anybody that's over 70 that, is still, that still has to walk to be able to eat. It's a bad place to be. And nobody under the influence of my voice this morning, everyone watching online, I wanted to listen to this. You need to arrange yourself and engage the grace of God. In the evening of your life, you will not struggle. Amen. I cannot hear your amen very well. I said in the evening of your life, you will not struggle. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why you need to contact grace right now for divine establishment. God wants to establish the work of your hand. He wants you to sow the right seeds right now. He wants you to invest rightly right now. Because your evening time is harvest time. And for everyone under the influence of this service this morning, I prophesy over you today. Your evening shall be a time of harvest. There shall be no struggle. In the name of Jesus. So what will you be known for in the evening of your life? What will you be known for in the evening of your life? It's very important. What will you be known for in the evening of your life? It's a big question that I wanted to take out of this service this morning. What will you be known for in the evening of your life? Let's, let's, let me start to tie everything together. Uh, three big thoughts about what enduring enterprises mean. Three big thoughts about enduring enterprises. One is that God wants you established. He wants to prosper the work of your hand, like I said before. He wants to prosper the work of your hand. You know, there, there, there's, there's a thought that you don't need God to be successful or rich. The truth is that there's a difference between the wealth of the world and the wealth God gives. There are two different things. Nothing goes for nothing. You can make money and be rich without God. Jesus met the young rich ruler. He didn't know Jesus before. He didn't know God. But he was a young rich ruler. He came to meet Jesus. Yeah. So you don't have to know Jesus to be rich. The God of mammon, the God of this world, can give somebody. It's just that nothing goes for nothing. You have to sacrifice certain things to be able to get that. God says, if you have a relationship with me, 
I am the one also that can give power to create wealth. Yeah. And the end thereof shall be working with me here and ending up in a good place. I prefer that one. I prefer that one. I don't know about you, but I prefer that one. Yeah. I prefer that one. Anybody can make money. So it's not about money. Anybody can make money. We had a guest minister here a few weeks ago, a few months ago, who said, uh, uh, what some of us work for, for one month, is what some girls collect one night when they have a good catch. You understand what I'm saying? When they catch somebody who's, who is willing to just dole out. Yeah. And they have made money. You know, if a, if a, a pretty young lady is dating a very rich man, he can make 50 million naira in one day. She can make 50 million naira in one day. Yeah. Yeah. Is she not rich? <laughs> She's rich. Is that how you want to be rich? That's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. It's not about money. It's deeper than money. The story of my life and the story of your life should be about a walk with God like Abraham. You know, I can't get away from Abraham. It should be about a walk with God. The important thing to note is that whoever God establishes, we endure. Yeah. We have young ladies today, even in church, who would do anything to get promotion at work. Where's your faith? Yeah. Whoever God <laughs> establishes, will endure. We have people today who would do anything possible. Young men who would do anything possible to get ahead in their career. Including things that are against their faith. I know young men, even in this church, who have been invited to join the court. Yeah. In their career path or in the business line that they are. If they will get ahead. And some of them will come and say, Pastor, this is what they are telling me. I say, you better carry your Bible. Because this one too is a court. Yes. We drink blood. Yes. Last Wednesday here, I led people to drink blood. We are superior witches. Yes. I'm just saying that so that somebody here, somebody watching online, you will know. Before they destroy your life on the altar of Mammon. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and had no sorrow. Yeah. Somebody sit with me this morning. Yeah? And you need to recognize that. You need to recognize that. Before you get yourself into trouble. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Yeah. Money is everywhere. Money is not scarce. Yeah. In this world, if you do the, what they call the own right thing, Money will flow to you. But it cannot endure. The Bible talks about the kind of wealth that develop wings and fly away. Wealth that cannot get to the next generation. We have many former rich families in this country. Yeah. Where in just the second generation, we can't find the trace of real wealth again. It's gone. Because it's found, it was founded on a different covenant. Yeah. And the Bible talks about better covenant based on better promises. And that's in Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Amen. Endurance speaks to the ability to withstand opposition. Yeah. Enduring, you know, enterprise speaks to the ability to withstand opposition. We see the first generation of Abraham. That's Isaac. In Genesis 26, you see how Isaac withstood opposition. And that wealth, that grace that was passed down, endured through that second generation. Genesis 26. Let me open there quickly. So I can run through this. Genesis 26. The Bible says from verse 1, There was a famine in the land beside the famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gerah. Verse 2. God showed up because there was a covenant. God showed up. The last Sunday of this month is going to be a covenant Sunday. Divine establishment by force. Yeah. By force. Yeah. That Sunday, we will pray. We will do everything. This year must end strong for you. 
2019 for you will not be eat or miss or anything like that. You are going to be eating it like this. Boom, 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 boom. And God will establish the work of your hand. Can I hear a better amen? amen. Bible says in verse 2 of Genesis 26 here, it said, Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. God orders our steps when we remain planted and uphold the covenant and not facilitate. Yeah. If you can facilitate because of 100 million, your road is far. Because what is in your destiny is hundreds of billions. Yeah, but if, we, if they just test you with 100 million, you're facilitating, and you're saying God understands, you know, and all those kind of things. Because here, when God appeared to Isaac and said, don't go to Egypt, there's, there was plenty of money in Egypt, and there was famine where he was. He went to, to, to Gera, and God said, stay here. And he obeyed. The Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Leave in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. I, I, uh, and bless you for, uh, for to you and your descendants I will give all this land and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven and I will give to your descendants all this land and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandment, my status and my laws the Bible says in verse 6 so Isaac dwelt in Gerah he stayed there and the men of the place asked about his wife. This verse 6 and 7 just showed us how even Isaac, though he has seen Abraham walk with God and all that, he still had his insecurities. Yeah. Sometimes we have our insecurities and God will allow them to show up so that we can be confronted with our weaknesses and insecurities and run back to God. Isaac here had to lie. Uh, she's some, just afraid of somebody taking his wife. Some people are just afraid of somebody taking your property. They're already saying, ah, let's take you somewhere. You know, that your land or that your, you know, in that business where you are, people there, they are doing something. You too, you have to do something. You know, oh, hallelujah, Lord, you know. <laughs> that one just came out, out of the abundance of the heart. I don't know where it came out from. Let, let me say it properly. They'll say, ah, this one is beyond going to church, too. you have to do something extra. You know, you had something to eat, you know. Uh -huh. So we'll take you somewhere. Insecurities. In Genesis uh, 24, you see the story of how Isaac got his wife, Rebekah. It was based on painstakingly following God. Abraham called his servant. You will go to my people. Isaac will not marry from here. I don't want step-down transformer to come into this matter. Yeah. We have to step this thing up. Every generation must be an improvement on the previous said, so you go. Isaac must marry from my people. And he gave the man a lot of things and said, go. The man got there, prayed. As he was praying, Rebecca showed up. Yeah. That was how he got married. So somebody who got married like that, under grace, was now still afraid that somebody can take that wife. How can God give you something? And you will still be afraid that somebody will take it. Are you still understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. And God confronted Isaac with his insecurities. And from there, he started to walk with God started to work with God. The Philistines, the Bible says, saw him showing endowment to his wife and said, ah, you lied to us. Verse 10, Abimelech said, what is this that you have done? One of the people might soon have lain with your wife and you would have brought a guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people saying, he who touches this man's man or his wife shall surely be put to death. God had already prepared the heart of the king to protect him. He wasn't supposed to have it. So sometimes you are running away from what you are not supposed to be running away from. What God has taken care of. And that's what is luring you into doing the wrong thing. May the Lord establish the work of your hand. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So you see verse 12, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Yeah. God brought him to that land, secured him there, blessed him there. Verse 13. And the, the, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. You see levels. Somebody say levels. Yeah. He began to prosper. He became prosperous. And then very prosperous. Continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. Under God. That means it's possible for one to have enduring wealth, enduring increasing prosperity every year, every day, being better than the previous. Under God. 
Somebody say with me this morning. Under God. Glory be to Jesus. Verse 14. For he had possession in flocks and possession in herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Philistines envied him. When we talk about enduring enterprises, when we talk about divine establishment, it comes with a fair share of envy. Because God, people will see what God is doing in your life and envy will come. So the Bible says that Isaac dug other wells apart from the wells that Abraham bequeathed to him. And they, 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 they said in verse 16, And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. And Isaac departed from there, beat his tent in the valley of Gerah, and, and, and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which had with their dog in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. But see what happened? He called them by the names which his father called them. Some people here, you need to look back and say, what has worked in our family? May, I mean, could it be that God wants me to still look back at some of these things? Because divine establishment is from generation to generation. Yeah? Sometimes God wants to establish you in a different thing because Isaac also dug his own wells. But the Bible says when he met the wells of Abraham that had been stopped, God opened his eyes to dig it again. He found water again. If you will find water again. Yeah. I said you will find water again. Yeah. So, verse 19, the Bible says, Isaac, you know, they stopped that one because of opposition. Verse 19, also Isaac's servant dug in the valley and found a well of running water, not just anyhow well, well of running water. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen. You know the herdsmen trouble. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's been for a long time. Yeah. You read the newspaper today, you say, where did they come from? They have been around for a long time. But the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that dealt with them here will deal with them for us. Can I hear a better amen? They quarreled with him. They said, the water is ours. So he called the name of the place Isaac because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one again. So he called the name of the place Sitna, which is enmity because this is real enmity. To, to engage divine establishment, you have to be willing to overcome enmity, to overcome contention. This month, the hold of contention shall be broken over everyone here. In the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, in verse 22, he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. This is what divine establishment looks like. Where you overcome contention. Somebody may be listening to me this morning. There's contention over your job. There's contention over, you know, your property, the location. There's contention over that contract. I want you to know this morning that God wants to establish you. It got to a point when Isaac got to Rehobo, the place of room, the place of space, that they came to meet him <laughs> to say, you know what? <laughs> you are... We want to be in partnership with you. We have seen now that your case is different. Mm. Look at verse 23. The Bible says, Then he went up to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night, and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you. I will multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there, and called the name, call on the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac servant dug a well. Yeah. Isaac became, the well did not take him away from God. He became closer to God. When God appeared to him again, now he, 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 he came to the level Isaac started to sacrifice to God and call on the name of the Lord his God. He didn't go after any idol or any, you know, sorcery. Call on the name of the Lord his God. Then the Bible says Abimelech came from Gerah with Auza, one of his friends, and Pico, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you have ate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, 
we are certainly seeing that the Lord is with you. They will see that the Lord is with you. I said they will see that the Lord is with you. In the name of Jesus. The story around your life is changing. I cannot hear your amen. Enough of query at work. Yeah. Enough of termination of contracts. They will see that the Lord is at work in your life. In the name of Jesus. They said we have seen certainly that the Lord is with you. So we, we said, let there now be an oath between us. Between you and us. And let us make a covenant with you. They came to ask for a covenant with Isaac. <laughs> That's what divine establishment looks like. When the will of a man pleases the Lord, the Bible says he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. May your enemies come into peace with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus. But one thing you, you should know is that you must have a steadfast spirit. You must have, uh, you, you have to be aggressive about getting established. It doesn't come anyhow. You have to stay where God has planted you. You have to do your work with excellence. You have to understand that you are an enterprise created with capacity for innovation, for creativity, for resourcefulness. The righteous shall flourish like palm tree, like cedar in, in, cedar in Lebanon. That's who we are. That's how God sees us when he looks down from heaven. Glory be to Jesus. Also, I want us to understand that God is interested in the kind of prosperity that brings impact. Yeah. God is interested in the kind of prosperity that brings impact. When you are established, your life should be focused on making impact. So enduring enterprises are about impact and meeting the needs of people. Yeah. Success of course to the level to which you are able to live out your purpose. Do you know your purpose? And are you treading that path? That's real enduring enterprise. Glory be to Jesus. And lastly this morning, establishment starts from where you are. It starts from where you are. Establishment starts from where you are. God wants to establish you where you are. I want you to look at this. This is popularly called the cash flow quadrant uh, from Robert Kiyosaki, the guy who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and the second book, Cash Flow Quadrant. If you have never read the Cash Flow Quadrant from Robert Kiyosaki, I wanted to get a copy of it and read it. I read it about 10 years ago, or maybe about 15 years ago, it transformed my life. Money flows in th these four contracts. You, if you are not going to steal, and you are not going to be an arm robber, you have to be either an employee, somebody that's self-employed, a business owner, or an investor. As we are all here this morning, all of us will find ourselves in one quadrant or the other here. Wherever you are right now, God wants to establish you there and then take you to the next level. Yeah. Not everybody will start a business. Some people will prosper exceedingly and become divinely established on their career path. Yeah. And they will create a legacy where God has planted them. Yeah. Some people will have to start a business. Some people will be self-employed. For most people who are self-employed, the only encouragement I have for you is that perhaps the next level in your divine establishment is to own a business. There's a difference between being self-employed, which is sole proprietorship, or have a company, a business. The difference is creating systems and being able to lead people yeah, to cross from that place to that place, to being a business owner. It's all about creating you know, systems and being able to lead people. Because for a self-employed person, if you go, if you are sick and you didn't go to work, you won't earn anything. You can imagine a lawyer who has a self-practice. You have to show up to make money. But if you have a practice that is a business, whether you are there or not, the company is working. Somebody stay with me today. Yeah. If you are a plumber and you are only self-employed, only yourself, they call you, you come and do. If you have malaria, your money has gone on malaria. As in, your money is on break. But if you have a plumbing business, that means you have other plumbers and other staff that are working in that plumbing business. Then, whether you are there or not, money is coming in. The last contract, which is the investor contract, is what I, I encourage all of us. 
whether you are employee, employee self-employed, business owner, play in the investor quadrant. It's one of the ways God establishes us, you know, in multiplying wealth. Stop keeping money in the account, just looking at it. To say, ah, money is going up here. Yeah. Put it in current account and just be looking at it. You know, some people like it. Yeah. Look for something to invest in. This is how God establishes wealth in our hand. And it can move from generation to generation. So that when you are going, you can hand over three, four houses to a child. And the child has a good start in life. It's because you have invested money in real estate. Or you have bought shares in a company. You know, today is not for that. The reason why I brought this up is just for you to understand that as we continue this month, wherever you are, whether you are employed, you are self-employed, you, you are trying to build a business, you are an investor, where you are right now, God wants to establish you and take that divine establishment to the next level. Whatever the next level means to you, God will reveal it to you this month. People who are supposed to stay on the career path and grow it to the highest level till you become top 3% in your industry. God will establish you there. People who are supposed to transition into enterprises, God will, will move you to your next level of divine establishment. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. This morning, my last question. How are you positioning yourself for the opportunities God is bringing your way? We're going to unpack this and many more midweek, Sundays. This month promises to be powerful, powerful at the Elevation Church. I'm telling you the truth, uh, we have this in invite card that ushers will give out after now. At the back of it, you have the calendar for the month, for the Wednesdays and, uh, yeah, and Sundays. You see what the schedule looks like and the different things we'll be looking at. I want you to make yourself available. Be blessed. This is not just academic teaching. This is transference of grace for divine establishment. God will open the Bible to you a little more this month. I want you to open your heart to interact with the word of God. The word of God is real. Yeah. All things were made by the word. Yeah. And your next level is in the word of God. As you, you know, soak it in this month, I see your next level appear. And I see divine establishment. Lift your two hands to Jesus this morning and ask him, Lord, help me to position for that which is ahead of me. Help me to position for that which is ahead of me. Somebody declare this morning, I receive grace for divine establishment. 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 For divine establishment. The Lord prospers the work of my hand and establish the work of my hand. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. His delightfulness and His favor. That's what the scripture says. Can you put Psalm 90 and verse 7 on the screen, please? As we pray this morning. Psalm 90 and verse 17, sorry. Put it on the screen quickly. And I wanted to just, just, just open your mouth and, and speak to God this morning. Open your mouth and speak to God this morning. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you feel comfortable sitting, you can sit. But I wanted to declare this morning that the beauty of the Lord is upon me. The beauty of the Lord is upon my career. The beauty of the Lord is upon my business. The van establishment of the work of my hand this season. Yes, Lord, establish my work. Establish the work of my hand. I wanted to declare it this morning. It's the word of the Lord for this season. We're engaging grace for divine establishment. We're engaging grace for divine establishment. I wanted to declare this morning, declare this morning. Divine establishment is your portion. Failure has come to an end. Missing the target has come to an end. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is establishing your feet like the hands feet. You will run through a troop and leap over the wall. Leap over the wall. Somebody is killing limitations. Leaping over the wall this season. In the name of Jesus. Breaking every ceiling. Every glass ceiling. Every glass ceiling is broken. In the name of Jesus. I see a woman in this house. Who is going to break every glass ceiling. In the name of Jesus. My God is taking the limits off you in that industry. 
in the name of Jesus. As the Lord establishes you, the health will celebrate you. We will hear about it. The name of Jesus shall be glorified. In the name of Jesus, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Let his delightfulness, his favor be upon us. In the name of Jesus, we we'll receive grace this morning. For divine establishment we bless your name jesus do for us that which only you can do father we bless your name wave your hands to him all over this place everyone watching online join us this morning wave your hands to him and celebrate him there's grace in this place for divine establishment god is establishing the work of your hand like never before God is establishing the work of your hand like never before. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is here this morning. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. We decree over everyone under the influence of this service this morning, open heavens. In the name of Jesus. The heavens over your life shall no longer be brass. Amen. The earth beneath you shall no longer be higher. Amen. The same way Isaac sowed in the land, Genesis 26 and verse 12, and in the same year he reaped a hundredfold. I decree over you today, my God prospers the work of your hand. Amen. It shall bring unusual results. Amen. We shall see the manifestation of favor Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I decree that the month of November is coming with new beginnings for you. The stories are turning around. In the name of Jesus. Favor unprecedented. Beauty unprecedented. Resourcefulness unprecedented. In the name of Jesus. A new level of creativity. A new level of innovation. In the name of Jesus. And I decree this morning that contention has come to an end yeah. over the work of your hand. Yeah. Everything that seemed to limit progress, we stop them this morning. Yeah. And we decree that the Lord our God has done you well. Yeah. We shall see manifestations yeah. and his name shall be glorified yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Please have your seat quietly. I'd like to pray for anyone in this service this morning who may be saying, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Can I ask that we bow down our heads just for the privacy of this moment? So we'll give some, some privacy to people who want to make a decision this morning. I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or somebody may be saying, I, I said this prayer before, but I bastard into sin. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you this morning wherever you may be in this auditorium or you are watching online you can join in this prayer if you are online can you go to the chat room let us know the decision that you are making this morning but if you are right here can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head just to show me that you are saying this prayer with me this morning all that you are saying is I want to rededicate my life to Jesus I know I am far away from God sin has separated me from God and I just want to say Jesus forgive my sins cleanse me from every unrighteousness come into my heart this morning maybe you never said a prayer before but you or you've said it before but you feel a hot an urgent need in your heart to come back to Jesus this morning lift your right hand above your head remain where you are and let's pray together let's pray together this morning Jesus will come into your life you'll never be the same again this is the new beginning for you a new beginning of divine establishment in your life if you are lifting your hand I want you to lift it well I want to be sure that you're praying with me this morning I want to be sure that you're praying with me this morning Glory be to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for that hand. I want to be sure that you're praying with me this morning. So if you're lifting your hand, lift it well. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Thank you for that hand at the back. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of. God wants to start something new in your life from this season. If your hand is up, can you stand by your chair right there? And let's pray together. Just stand by your chair right there and let's pray together. Thank you for standing. Just stand by your chair right there and let's pray together. Stand by your chair right there. If you're standing, I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus. I acknowledge 
that I'm a sinner and I cannot help myself. So I come to you today and I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Fill my heart with your spirit. Give me a new beginning from this moment forward. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. In Jesus' name, let me say a prayer with you. Father, I thank you for everyone standing and saying this prayer with me this morning. I decree and declare this morning that the hold of the devil is broken over their lives. You said in your word that if anyone will come to you, you will in no wise reject. We thank you for accepting them into the beloved this morning. Start a new work in their lives. Establish them in righteousness and establish the work of their hand. We thank you for your faithfulness towards them and we bless your name. If you're standing, I want you to just look to your left or right. You see our counselors there. I want you to please follow them quickly. Uh, somebody is right there. Counselors, can we please back on, 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 on them? People making decisions this morning. Our counselors will want to spend about five minutes with you. They will, they will get your details, put some documents in your hand, and introduce you to our faith development classes, which we believe will be a blessing to you and establish you in righteousness. Can we appreciate everyone making a decision this morning? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you are blessed this morning, I want you to appreciate Jesus. Appreciate Jesus.